Hello and welcome to episode 59 of the Physique Development Podcast. How's it feel to get to episode 59? Pretty awesome. We've been uh, really getting after it and I've really been enjoying it. Yeah, same here. But in this episode, we're going to be talking about a little bit of a show recap, uh, talking about how the peak went, how show day went, and what our plans are moving forward. So by the time you're listening to this, I'm in peak week again. Yeah. Happy peak week, Sue. Yeah. We uh, <laughs> originally, the game plan was to do the show that we did this past weekend and then take the five weeks from there into Junior Nats and uh, bring her absolute best physique to the stage, which we still plan to do in uh, Chattanooga. Uh, but we're having a little bit of a detour, a little bit of a pivot with how the show went this past Saturday. And we'll be competing uh, when you guys are listening to this this coming Saturday. Yeah. Uh, so getting into things a little bit there, I think that it's going to be helpful to talk about how peak week went as well as being able to talk about what we learned from the show, what we're taking away from the show, as well as a mindset and like um, gauging expectations slash managing expectations coming into a show and what that looks like post show as far as all of the feelings and emotions that you have. Yeah. And I, I think that it's going to be important for us to start from a place of understanding within uh, the show in Chattanooga is a, is a national show. And when um, that's the show that would be in five weeks from now. And so when we're talking about that show, the goal when you're competing at a national show is to attain your pro card. And there are standards or requirements that you have to fulfill to be able to get on that stage. And so you have to get first or second in your class um, at your regional show to be able to qualify for nationals. And so that is where we fell short this past week. Um, and we fell into the third spot within um, our placing. And so that is why we're having to do the, the extra show, just to clarify for those that are unfamiliar with uh, the competition world as a whole. Yeah, and if you... Uh might be confused as far as in 2020, they did change the rules for a year and a half or two years of saying anyone who is a top five can go on to a national show just because there were so few shows to go to in 2020. So it is something that if you had heard that in the past and you're wondering why it's changed, it's always been the top one and two, uh, but they did change it within COVID and everything that kind of happened in that time frame. Yeah. So where where do you want to start? I guess from peak week, we can start. Yeah. So when we look at peak week, for those who are unfamiliar with peak week, that is a time for us to decrease inflammation, um, get the body into a proper position to be able to increase carbohydrates and improve the overall look um, by increasing fullness and those different factors. So it's a time for us to optimize and prime the physique, if you will, to put the best physique on stage that Saturday. Um and you know, it, we take it over a seven day period. There's a lot of different ways that you can approach peak weeks in general for Sue and, and for athletes that it's their first peak week with me. I take a pretty conservative approach to be able to see what's going to be responsive, what's going to be something that is, is conducive for us to be able to take data and, and potentially shoot for a home run in shows later on in the year specifically. And so year to year data is important, but uh, when it's that first show, we're really shooting for roughly an 85 to 90% look of the physique. I'm not trying to hit an absolute home run that first peak week because more often than not, the look that's 85 or 90% is going to be much better than the look that's potentially going to be like a 103% with a slight spillover or something of that nature. And so I went with an approach that was, was very uh, conducive to what we were shooting for. I felt as though that we were able to um, hit the look that I was anticipating for. Uh, and I, I felt like the approach was good. Yeah. And I, I agree with you there. And I think one thing that's really important to talk about when it comes to peak weeks is one, it's not a time to get in shape. You have to already be in shape going into the peak week. And it's something that exactly what Alex said, we're optimizing, we're fine tuning things. So if you are, if you have a ton of weight still to lose, or even five or 10 pounds still to lose, that's going to be something that isn't going to be fixed within a peak week. You're already 
already in shape and ready to go in peak week and just making sure you're able to present your best physique. And within that, with this being our first time that Alex is writing a peak week, it's also something where, like he said, we're just trying to figure it out. And it's also something that when you look at a peak week and when you look at all the different variables that go into it and what can happen from that peak week, uh, you also need to take into consideration what the rest of your season is. So that's something else that we were thinking of, of, hey, we want to hit 100% for the show in five weeks. And a regional show is going to be um, something that we want to make sure that we qualify, we get feedback, we get on stage, we look really great, but we weren't aiming for that 100%. We were aiming to learn and we were we were aiming to win. No one goes to lose. <laughs> I don't think anyone goes to lose. But it's also something that we were trying to plan to make sure that I was able to present the best physique in five weeks. Now, if you're listening to this and you're like, well, why don't you just hit 100%, 100%. That doesn't happen (laughs) most of the time. And it's also something that you need to take into consideration that athlete and what stress is on them as well as what circumstances they're under. So if someone is a natural athlete, if you push them and get them to that 100% and then you have to keep them at 100% for five more weeks, that's extremely difficult. With an enhanced athlete, not that it's not difficult, but there are some different rules that are in place or different things that are going to take place to get to that point in time. So it's very, very methodical. And Alex went about it in a phenomenal way. He really prioritized me, the data that we had, and he put things in place that were going to be great as far as my skin prep. The tan was the best a tan has ever sat on me. Um, The best I felt going into a show energy-wise as well as stress-wise. I was talking to a friend even going into it, and they were like, how are you doing? How are things going? And I just said, like, I feel like a different person going into this show. I don't feel like I'm thinking, am I ready? Are things good to go? Is the coach going to make the right call? I just knew that Alex was going to do what was going to be best for me in those instances with the data that he had. And I knew that we were going to be there to support one another at the end. So I want to thank you for all of the peace of mind that you gave me going into the show. I know that you beat yourself up and tore yourself apart after the show. Um, But hindsight is 2020. And if you know, anything about Alex and I. We're both blind as shit. So our hindsight is really great, but our actual eyesight, you know, our kids are going to be screwed. That's just shit. Uh, But it is something that you can look back and you can beat yourself up about all the things that could have happened or could have changed. But at the core of it, We took the data and he specifically took the data and the information from everything and built out what was going to be the best plan with gathering data in mind. Yeah. And so when we speak to the peak week, there's going to be different ways to um, bring in the carbohydrates and utilize them. And so the approach that we took and and the data that I was pulling from is that we had utilized uh, two-day and three-day refeeds for Sue um, throughout the the prep itself. And we collected data within photos prior to going into those and then photos at the conclusion of those refeeds to get some accumulation of data that is going to be helpful for us to see how we filled out with that quantity of carbohydrates hydrates, the quantity of um, training or the type of training, I should say, the the sleep, the um, the water, the uh, sodium and um, electrolytes. Yeah. Um, stress levels, those different factors and seeing what that looked like. And so that was something that we utilized. And so I utilized what is called a backload. And so what we did was just gradually increased calories or carbohydrates, more specifically calories as a whole, but more so carbohydrates, uh, specifically macro wise. And so what we did was that we increased carbs Thursday and Friday specifically. We had a decent bit of water and, and food on show day. And it's interesting because I felt as though in the morning that I had given her too much food um, within prejudging. But by the time that we got to finals, it was a much better look in general. And so uh, it was a sign that actually we didn't do too much food. It was potentially just needing more time in general to let that food settle more than anything. Um, So that's valuable data for us to get feeding earlier or to increase food prior to the day in which we're, we're competing. And so that was something that I was able to pull from and, and be uh, constructively critical um, within what we're going to do moving forward. So if there was, what are some things in in your mind that we, that we missed on? 
I know that after the show, I actually, um, not directly after the show, there's a lot of emotions and feelings and people there. So I just put on a smile and was present with the people that were there to support me. And then on Sunday, we all slept in a little bit longer than we have the past few days and then took the drive home and really just took Sunday to like get unpacked, get laundry done, set ourselves up for success coming into Monday. And so on Monday, I made a list of things and I wrote things that you, and I like put you in all caps and circled, that you can improve on slash like the controllable variables. Because there's definitely things that I know personally going into the show that I could have done better. And that's not coming from a place of like completely beating myself up and feeling like I'm never good enough. There's there's some side of that that happened, but then there is the other side of knowing, hey, if you honestly look at this in an unbiased way, in what ways did you not show up and that you know that? And one of those was posing. And that honestly like really is hard to say, especially because it's something that I help others with posing and I talk about how important it is to practice and I let that slip through my fingers. Uh, if I'm being just completely honest, and I've talked about this, that my priorities within this prep, like PD has been above this prep as well as my relationship with Alex has been above this prep. And while my relationship with Alex will always be number one, we very much so had the conversation of, hey, these next five weeks, this has to be the main priority or we're just wasting our time. And I was putting it at bottom priority for posing because it just felt like, all right, I'm getting everything done that I need to get done. There's so much on my plate. I don't really have these 10, 20, 30 minutes to devote to posing. And that's just not true, especially if it's something that I care about. So I know I need to improve on posing, not only getting a second eye. So I already reached out to a posing coach and have sessions scheduled with her. I also know that I need to hold my poses longer. I did not practice that long enough whatsoever. And again, that really sucks to come to the conclusion of of knowing that there's things that were my fault um, or things that I fell short of. And it's just you have to be able to have those honest conversations with yourself. So holding my poses as well as just feeling comfortable running through my routine in front of other people. A lot of my posing was done just by myself, which is very valuable to have that time by yourself. But I was very nervous getting back on stage. It had been two years. I also have um, like just past anxieties around stage because of how my stage days and show days have turned out. And I allowed some of that to carry over when I went on for prejudging. Um, And a lot of that was cleared away by the time I went on for finals. But it is something I need to keep in mind when it comes to the prejudging and just show day as a whole, um, as well as not relying on practicing with a mirror. Um, It's something that I use a mirror and I encourage others to use a mirror to a certain degree. But on stage, there is no mirror. There's no tweaking. You have to be comfortable in those poses. And that's something that I didn't prioritize enough. So already these first two days, those have both been a priority and getting things settled and making sure that I can show up for myself in the way that I know I can. Um, And also it leaves it to a place of if I'm going to complain, I want to make sure I'm rightfully complaining. And I've said this a few different times for a few different things like my skin included of I didn't want to sit around and complain about my skin not being the skin that I wanted as far as my face. And so I was going to do absolutely everything in my power to make it the best. And if it still wasn't improving, then yeah, I have a little bit of a right to complain. Uh, But for this, like I can't sit here and just say, oh, it was the judges or it was the show or it was this, even if any of that holds weight, because there are still things that I need to do to show up for myself to also show up in the way that I want to for that stage. Hey guys, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I've been wanting to hire the last coach that I'll ever need, then we cannot wait to get on a phone call with you. There's going to be an inquiry link below in the description box or the show notes. We'll hop on a call, talk about the service and make sure that we get you living the life that you want to. Yeah. And I think that speaking to the the judges aspect of things <clears throat> and, and whether we agreed with, with how they went about it, I think that this is one thing that I tell all of our uh, clients in general is that if there was 
no, like there was no shadow. There was not a shadow of a doubt that you were the best person on stage. Then at that point, I feel as though that you're able to complain about the the judges. Like if you really, to your core, there's not a single aspect to your physique that any other competitor beats you with. Then I think at that point you have something to complain about. But I don't feel like that was that was us. There's mm -hmm. things that we knew within your physique that needed to improve. Thus, we can be upset with the um, how the the judging went. But at the end of the day, we were not. I mean crystal clear, the best person on that stage. Thus, we have more to work on regardless. And so I think that that's something that I was able to to take away. And that, I think that gives peace of mind too, is that this is a painfully sub subjective sport. And if you find yourself in a situation where you're not agreeing with what the judges decided, um, <laughs> It, especially within bikini, uh, it, it, that's going to be the one where it is painfully subjective and uh, whether they give you enough time on stage, they don't give you enough time on stage, all those different factors. At the end of the day, were you the perfect version of you that day? If not, then at that point, there's no reason to complain a whole lot within what the judges, you know, concluded. Yeah. And all that to say that that doesn't mean that you can't be upset or right. sad. And I think that that was something that I was dealing with was knowing that I could have looked better from things that were within my personal control, not even touching on anything Alex related. Like there were things that I personally could have done to look better. And I know that that was, that was the best that I've ever looked, but it's not the best that I can look. And so I was frustrated because I didn't feel like there were certain things that went my way. But at the same time, I had to recognize that like I wasn't the best on stage. And so within that, I was in a very complicated place emotionally of logically understanding that I wasn't the best on stage, but then I'm a, I'm a human being and feeling the emotions of hurt and frustration for how things went. And so that was a lot to unpack. And that's something that I think is really important to just talk about. I, I talk about it with my clients, honestly, about like you're allowed to feel your feelings, but it's also looking at things contextually and being able to have that time before you move on. So actually, by the time you're listening to this on Thursday. So you're listening to this on Monday, if you listen to it on the days they come out. Um, on Thursday will be my show day vlog. And at the end of it, we talk about the show. And some of this stuff is stuff we're talking about within this podcast. But it is the fact of like, you're allowed to be hurt, you're allowed to feel upset and to um, be angry, insert emotion here. But like Alex says at the end of the video, like you have to have a time limit on that to be able to move forward. And so he has vocalized and we've talked about it before of like the 24 hour rule. And this was something that we personally very much so implemented. I remember the first time was actually in 2020 during prep of shows kept getting pushed back and it was tumultuous. <laughs> like it was hard um, with everything going on within COVID and like shows getting canceled during peak week, day of show, night before show, just pushing back with no end in sight. And there was times that I just broke down and Alex was like, you have to decide, like, if you're going to keep doing this, you have to move on from this. So be upset. But like by this time tomorrow, I want us to have a discussion about what this means moving forward. And so that's something that we've practiced since then, if not before then. That's just a very vivid memory in my head of sitting on the couch in our old house having that conversation um, because it was very uh, much a turning point for me of recognizing you're allowed to feel this way, but you also need to move on. Yeah. And I think that that rule specifically actually comes from my dad. <laughs> um, because, What's up, Brian Bush? Yeah, that is that is my dad from uh, years of playing sports in general is that <clears throat> you essentially, with baseball specifically, is, baseball is one where you could have <clears throat> five at-bats and have four really bad ones and then have one great one. And really, you only that one really is the only one that matters. And so the aspect of of having a poor at bat and then just always repeating to yourself, like you've got basically five minutes to to sit on this and see what the deal is and then move on to the next inning or what have you. And then he and I would watch video of <laughs> when I, uh, at bats, so we would review it then. But once that, once we were done 
reviewing, it was over in terms of what those at bats were and those different things. And so I'm very fortunate in the sense of my previous uh, baseball, all the sports in general really play a big role into how I coach now um, within the sport of bodybuilding. And I think that they are one and of the same, just in different ways, I suppose. Um, but I think that having that that short memory um, is is very important, especially when you have a, a peak week that's going to be following just you know a week and a half later, essentially. Um, and so that's something that you have to be very cognizant of within that. And two things that I wanted to, to speak to um, um, while Sue was talking is that it's, it's tough to complain about the, the show itself. Um, because in the grand scheme of things, competing is a, a hobby. Competing is something that, uh, we choose to do. And, and when we think of it in this, and both of us think this way is that there are much bigger things going on in the world <laughs> than competing. And so it seems insignificant to speak on them. But I also understand that it's very important to us. And it's something that we've put a lot of time into and care a lot about. And there's other people that also care just as much as we do about the sport um, and, and, you know, could be struggling with things themselves. And I think that there's a lot of value in, in sharing that. Um, and I can't think of the second thing, but that was the first thing that I wanted to share. And I think that that's something I wanted to reiterate is that um, if you feel as though that you're, you're struggling with competing and feeling as though that it seems silly to complain about because of all the bigger things in the world is that there's always going to be bigger things in the world going on, especially with how plugged in we are with social media now, um, there's always going to be a, a bigger issue at hand, but what you're experiencing and the things that are important to you in your life, you should talk about and, uh, share with those that you, you care about the most. Yeah. And I, I think that that's something that I've always tried to keep in mind, but those moments like that really test me. And especially when you have people close to you going through hard times of it just feeling like, why does this matter comparatively to that? But it's something that I read in a book one time. I, I really, it's escaping me what book it was, but it was the concept of if you always think like someone else has it uh, worse than me, that's also thinking on the opposite of any time you experience something good, you don't think to yourself, well, someone else has it better than me. Um, and so it is important to kind of look at those flip sides of you want to be able to celebrate and or be sad about certain things, but also contextualize them, but not take away from your own feelings um, and emotions, which is something that I'm still learning and working on. I think that uh, when we talk about different things on this podcast, it's definitely not coming from a place of, I know everything and I have it all figured out. It's These are conversations that Alex and I have slash Alex Austin and I have that are we believe are meaningful and that help move the needle forward to be able to talk about these things instead of just brushing it off and saying it's not important in the grand scheme of things. Because you could say that really about anything, but being able to take that, learn from those experiences and move that forward is always going to be helpful for you, which is something that I made a reel recently. And I talk about my most successful clients are the ones that are able to take experiences and truly learn from them because they're not failures unless you choose not to learn from them um, or choose not to try because I could look at this and say I failed, but think about the people that actually failed were the people that were too scared to even show up and try because of the fear of failing. And it's also something to be able to think about within the light bulb when asked about that for Thomas Edison, he said, I didn't find, I didn't fail. I just found 10,000 that didn't work. And so being able to take that mindset of, he could have looked at that if I failed to make the light bulb 10,000 times. But in reality, he just learned something each time from those 10,000 times to be able to get to the success that he wanted to. And so if I take this experience within show day, and I did tell myself that I was a failure and that I messed up and that I wasn't cut out for winning and all these different things, but I can either choose to tell myself that, which would truly be failure, which would be just accepting it, or being able to keep trying and figuring it out until it does work. And that's what success is as a whole, is continuing to try and continuing to fail, but getting back up, just like that Chinese proverb of fall down seven times, get up eight. That's what's important in these situations. 
Yeah. And I think that uh, one vulnerable place for us specifically is that with this year, <clears throat> you guys have heard us talk on here about how much more seriously we've taken, you know, sharing our life as well as sharing things within social media um, or, or for, for physique development. Um, and so that was one thing that we talked about yesterday, as Sue and I have had the last two days to really ref reflect on things is that um, if we didn't have Miguel and Daniel um, there at the show and, and had as much support as we did, <clears throat> We could have just probably kind of slipped into the shadows and probably not said a whole lot and just kind of rolled with the punches, jumped into this next show without saying a whole lot, gotten the qualification and moved forward. And people wouldn't have been paying much attention. But I also think that it's very important for us to share this because not many people share when they're not doing well. And the the aspect within social media is it's a, it's a highlight reel. Well, in the concept and, and kind of the approach that we're taking is that this is going to be a highlight reel in terms of the quality of content that you receive, <laughs> but it is not going to be a highlight reel in the sense of like everything is going to be perfect and everything is going to be a success and those different factors. This is really us and the the life that we're living, the chapters that we are are walking through. Um, and I think that that's been something that's super pow powerful for me um, to work through because that was another thing that I was like kind of embarrassed with after the show um, because it was like, man, we we brought staff here to work and to get all this captured and we fell short of, of what the goal was. And I felt as though that we had wasted our own money, our own time, our employees' time, all those things. Um, and I know that every single one of them, if they were sitting in this room right now, would be like, fuck you. Like, we <laughs> love you guys. We would have been there if you didn't pay us to be there. And so I think that that's a, a really powerful thing. Um, and, and But that was how I felt after, is that I had let all those people around me down. And, and I know that's how you felt as well. Um, and that was, was, was challenging. And then I think that my mind shifted very quickly from that when we went out to dinner with everyone after, and that was kind of the highlight of the day. It was a, a you know being able to sit and, and have that time with them. We were at a very nice restaurant in Indianapolis. <laughs> it was we were it was too nice of a restaurant for us to be in at eleven o'clock at night. Dress the way that we we were. were. I was in basically this exact outfit. I had shorts, a a t shirt on. Um, if any of you are are familiar with Daniel, um, he is loud and rambunctious and I love him and he's so funny. But in that setting is probably a little too much for <laughs> like a very, <laughs> uh, what what kind of restaurant? It's a, it's a steakhouse, it, yeah, but it's, it's like, like a, a, I mean, it's if you go restaurant. on open table, it's like one that has like $3 signs yeah. next to it or something. It's, it was, a, it's a nice steakhouse. There's one here in Columbus. Yeah. Um, and we also not only had all of us in like t-shirt and shorts, but then <laughs> Miguel and Daniel both had cameras and Daniel was walking around being just a goon, which we love him for a hundred percent. Do yeah. not want him to change, but it was, it was just, just hilarious. very funny within the moment of being able to recognize like this is a place that people dress up and come to <laughs> and we even like heckled them to get a reservation yeah. because I personally I was like I don't want to make the plan for post show and I also you never know how late shows are going to run like we've been at shows that bikini doesn't get off till midnight and so you're not going out to eat and so I didn't plan for anything and I just was like if someone else wants to make a plan fine but I don't want that stress on my plate and so we finish up and we're trying to get a reservation and trying to look at who will take my sister and my dad are being rock stars. They're calling every place trying to get in. And we had miscounted at one point and there was nine of us going to dinner, but we had only counted eight and we had called Hyde Park and we were like, hey, we have eight people. Can you get us in? And they were like, no, that's like a large amount of people. We can't make that happen. And so then one person wasn't gonna come with us because they had to go. And we call back and we're like, <laughs> hey, could you get a table for seven? And they were like, seven is the same as eight. Like, no, we can't get you a table. Uh, but then they ended up saying like, you know what? We'll figure it out. Just come. And then we come and we had eight people. <laughs> and we had horrible service too. Oh, yeah. Like, but <laughs> they were probably very irritated with us um, and But all the, that. the whole point of that story was that it was kind of the highlight of the day. Like yes. it, it really ended the the day on a, on a high note. Um, and so I think that that is a, a sign of just like the, the people that you're there with like really be present with them it would have been very easy and i talk about this in the youtube video is that it would have been very easy for sue to um 
be upset after the show and just tell everyone she doesn't want to do anything and go back to the room and cry and be very upset. Um, that would have been the very easy thing to do. And she opted to not take that route and be very grateful for the people that were there for her um, and show up for them as well. And I, I know that each of them would would say that they're very grateful for that because we did have so much fun after, whereas we would have missed out on all of that. And it would have really been a, a damper of a day as a whole mm -hmm. to where that really you know swung the day in a more positive direction. Yeah. Um, and touching on you talking about sharing publicly, and it would have been very easy to kind of fall into the shadows. I know that for me specifically, this is something that I struggle with and I'm constantly working on because I like when it comes to like failing or fear of failure, that's something that's extremely prevalent within my life. And it's a reason to a certain degree, of course, my mental headspace plays into it. And I've talked about that within preps of why I haven't shared everything is more of like my mental sanity. And that's 100% true. But when I look at it, a lot of times I don't like to share things because, again, I'm afraid of how they're going to turn out, and I'd rather that be something that I experience and not have the whole world see um, or not feel like a failure in front of everyone. And it's something that, like, for example, if I look back and think, like, the first program I ever released when it was Sue Gaines Coaching, I wasn't a part of PD yet. I was so excited. I thought I was going to make all this money, and I sold six. And that was extremely disappointing to pour so much into something and be so excited and then feel like it just flopped and have multiple experiences like that. And then all of my show days feel like that of I and Alex and I talked about this the other day as well of every single show day I've gotten up there, I have fallen short of the goal that I've set up for myself. Of my first show ever, I got ninth place in a regional show. Then my second show, which um, was I don't, it's not a great experience either. Something where I got third in again and fell short of that qualification and really put my hormones in a poor spot. Um, then going into our wedding and then in 2020 of um, it being a very, very, very small class and me not even winning that class and then going on and placing, tying for last place at a national show in front of coaches and competitors that I really admire and look up to and just felt so embarrassed and front of everyone like I was just standing up there like ev well basically everything was showing but uh, standing up there feeling so embarrassed of all these people just saw me fall on my face and then when it comes to like this prep of being in the spot of do I want that to happen again can I handle falling again and having to fall in front of multiple people um, and it's something that I still struggle with. I'm not perfect, but I'm glad that I'm putting myself in those uncomfortable situations because I was having an internal dialogue in between prejudging and finals of like, oh, so you're being realistic with yourself and it's important to be realistic. But at the same time, it's important to have hope and confidence in what you've set out and what you can achieve. And I think I have a hard balance between those because my realistic normally goes to not exactly realistic, but worse than realistic of that not worst case scenario, but just not like a positive situation. And so I falter between those two of, hey, how can I have confidence, but also understand that there's a chance that this isn't going to work out. And that's something that I'm constantly trying to figure out and balance and learn through. And now I'm doing it in front of thousands and thousands of people, which is difficult to do. But I'm very proud of myself for continuing to show up and continuing to put myself in these hard situations. Because just like within training, if you have to stress your body for it to grow and for it to change, you have to do the same thing mentally. You have to put yourself in hard situations to be able to grow from it. If you want to be able to embrace the suck of like a hard training session or a prep or whatever it may be, you have to train yourself to embrace that suck and you have to get reps in. As we've talked about on the podcast of talking about what we learn from posting on social media or posting consistently, 
Like you have to get reps in to get better at talking publicly, talking better on camera, being able to fine tune your message. You have to get those reps in. The same thing within being able to get mentally tougher. You have to put yourself in situations because if you just put yourself in the same situations, you're not ever going to change. And so it's something that even though it sucks and it's hard and all these different emotions, I'm very proud that I did put myself in that situation that would result in me being embarrassed or not feeling my best because I feel like I'm going to be able to take something from this and to grow and to learn and to continue to improve as a human being, which is my end goal as a whole. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. Right. And I think that um, <clears throat> there's two scenarios that were shared with us. Um, so last year, Sable, uh, I don't know if she'll be listening to this. Hi, but Sable. Hi, Sable. We if you are you. listening to, we do love you. Um, Sable, who uh, was a physique development client and is like a physique development lifetime alum. Like, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to let her not be a client. <laughs> you know, um, she's not competing at the moment. I know she says she's done, but we'll yeah, see. I always say at the moment for her. <laughs> and so within that, last year, she won the overall for bikini in, in junior Nats. And so last year was like her, her final season that we had, that she had decided that that was going to be the case. And it was the first time for her and I working together, we had worked through her improvement season prior to that, but that was the first competition season her and I had worked with or worked together. And so in that, the very first show where I know I have an athlete that is going to be very competitive for her pro card in just a few months, she gets sixth in that first show at a regional show that she should have very well won. I mean, yeah. honest to God, she should have won. And she she didn't. And that was a, a massive wake-up call for us. And then we go in, and then the next show, I'm not sure what we place, but the next show, she gets her qualification. And then from there, she qualifies and then goes to Junior Nats. And as I already said, she wins her class um, at Junior Nats, goes on to win the overall. And I would, having been to every national show for the last two years, mm -hmm. yes, or this past weekend being uh, Junior USA's was the first national show I haven't been to in the last two and a half years. Yeah, we've been to, uh, we've been to every single one of them. And mm -hmm. I would say that that was the the Junior Nats of last year was probably the most competitive overall. Yeah, it was overall. crazy. She looked amazing. And so then, and for her to win the overall, I just want to clarify this for anyone who doesn't understand. That means not only everyone who went to the national show and was in her height class that she beat and became a pro for placing first in her class, a very competitive class, then everyone who won their classes compete against each other to be crowned the overall. And she won the overall. It's just a huge freaking deal at a national show to win the overall, not to take away from anyone who wins a regional overall, but the national stage overall is insane to be able to win. So that was incredible. I just want to like really nail in how freaking cool that is and how like big that is. Yeah. And then we, we turned around and um, ended the year at the Texas Pro and she got sixth at the Texas Pro that year. Um, and Ashley Colt uh, Water. Yeah. She won the show. I think. Um, I'm not recalling correctly, but there were multiple Olympians yeah, there at was, the show. I, I think there was at least three Olympians at the show. And so that was, I mean, from start to finish, craziest year of competing I've probably been a part of. Um, but as an example within this, that is, is very similar to where that first show just really did not go as planned. Um, and it turned out to be exactly what we wanted and, and more to be able to place the way that we did on the on the on the pro stage at the end. And, and same goes for Austin. For those of you who are unaware, prior to the beard, prior to the beard, Austin <laughs> was an IFBB pro, still is an IFBB pro, yeah. uh, men's physique pro. And the show. So for Austin's competing career, and I know that there's been some episodes where he's talked about it a little bit competed extremely well, won a lot of of swords and trophies and those different factors. The show prior to him going um, to Pittsburgh to win his pro card, he ended up getting third, which was the first time that he had not won the show, I believe. 
And that was the show prior to him going to nationals, which was kind of daunting of like, oh gosh, am I regressing or am I not in the right place? And then turns around and, and wins it. So singular placing, it all, it comes down to so many different things when we're talking about shows of, of who shows up, um, how the peak goes that day, how you look that day. Is there anything that threw things off your sleep, your stress, your water, your food, anything at all, um, as well as what the judges are looking for that day. Um, how was your posing? There's so many factors and and you're, you're going up there, you've got one shot to really showcase yourself, especially at, at, the regional sh at a regional show where at national shows, they may rejudge in the evening. Not always, but it's more common for them to judge and mm -hmm. rejudge in the evening relative to a regional show. At the regional show, the likelihood that you get rejudged at finals is basically none um, unless it's a bigger regional show. So you've got that one shot in prejudging to really uh, speak for yourself and, and make a name for yourself. And so uh, understanding that each time is, is its own crack and you've got to be able to roll with the punches and, and pivot and continue to show up um, to, to get the result that you want. Yeah, because if I just continue to say, well, I placed this way regionally, that means I'm not going to be competitive at all nationally and I, this just isn't for me where Sable or Austin could have very easily said the same thing. And we see how those turned out by just, again, taking that, taking the the pain that came with that. I very much so, because I wasn't a part of Austin's life at that time, I know the Sable situation a lot better. I remember her coming off that stage. I remember her like tearing up on her story and just being very defeated and frustrated and then to turn around and to be at the show where she takes the overall was so cool to see and it's something that I forgot about it in the moment of everything that's been going on in our lives and Sable very kindly reminded me of hey like this doesn't mean that it's over you just have to keep showing up and that's exactly what I was just saying of like keep after it, keep trying and keep going for it. Of course, there's sometimes where the writing's on the wall and you need to hang it up. But within this situation, that's not it. And I think that hindsight tells me that it was good to have this experience because we were able to take a lot away from it after we had some time to digest it, to have some conversations, to have time to ourselves, all of that, to be able to digest it. And now I think that will come into the national show even better than we would have originally because we kind of have this to push us forward, to learn from it. And it also gives us another chance at a peak, which we talked about this the other day of just we were we didn't plan for a second show at all outside of going to the national show and that really is putting Alex in a bind of we've never done a peak week together of him controlling everything and now I'm expecting him to hit it on the nose just right off the bat which doesn't really happen yeah and I I part I take you know, responsibility for that as well. It's not just you asking me to do that. I think that I, I expect myself to, to do that quality of work right off the bat. And, um, I expect a lot out of myself all the time, um, within, uh, competitors and those different things. And I think that the front end of this year, um, competitors have really done a great job for physique development. The cards haven't fallen in our direction, um, so far, and it's been super, challenging for me because I feel as though that I'm doing everything that I can. And, and, um, I will, I will say that judging has not been, uh, status quo. It has been quite wishy-washy from state to state. And I think that this happens every year at the beginning of the year where they're trying to find what the standard is from a bikini perspective. And unfortunately not every state is on the same wavelength within that. And so the shows at the beginning of the year I find to be some of the more challenging from a judging perspective. Um, and that's what we've run into thus far. Um, and I know that the, every year it's, it's the, I'll, I'll something will turn the corner here and, and we'll, we'll, we'll find our groove and, and those different factors. And, but it's challenging. It's challenging, especially with myself where I, I expect, I expect to win all the time. And I know that that's not always the, uh, the, possible, you know, expectation that I can place, but that's what I always work with. And so, um, yeah, what are, what are our, what are our plans, you know, moving forward? What are we changing going into show two here? 
Yeah. So uh, as I said, within posing that stuff that is already being implemented, I'm also focusing just more on core control, which is something that I've been working on over the past two years a lot. My core has improved a ton, but it is something that within being on stage, making sure that you can keep your core tight while you're breathing, going through all of that is something that I'm just prioritizing more and more. Um, and then it's also something that we are changing the way that the peak is going to go with a lot of the information that we have gathered. Um, and as of right now, it's just been like as soon as Sunday started, like that morning in the hotel, I went and I did my cardio that I needed to do. I came back and then on Monday I trained. Today is Tuesday. I'll be training today. Did my cardio both times, um, have my food in place, and we're depleting um, uh, within the same macros that we were going into the last show for right now. We'll get pictures after this third day of depletion and then decide what we're going to do moving forward for food and then especially going into the peak week. Yeah, uh, we'll be, we got more, a little bit more aggressive from a cardio standpoint, got a little bit more aggressive from a dietary standpoint. Some of the data that we were able to pull at the beginning of the depletion uh, was really good because that was, uh, we had made some shifts down with food and had seen some good strides just over a three day period. Um, and that works in conjunction with, uh, backing off of some of that cardio as well to see some of that inflammation come off of her legs. But the allotment from a caloric standpoint was was advantageous that we saw uh, within physique photos. So we're, we're moving to pictures every four days now rather than uh, where we were at uh, roughly six days or seven days, depending. And so that's going to be a, a shift there. We're uh, shifting to more video as well because we were, were previously, uh, and that was one of the things that, that was probably the other thing I was going to talk about earlier is that I um, I, with, with all of my clients do a much better job of not making a whole lot of assumptions. And so I'm sure that some of them are listening and laughing at this moment. Cause I, I ask potentially some silly questions just to ensure that we're on the same page. And that was one thing that I was reflecting on Sunday that I didn't do a good job with, with Sue. Um, I made a lot of assumptions that I should have been asking about and confirming that we were on the same page, uh, like within the posing specifically, that being the big one. And so that's something that I have to do a better job of uh, moving forward here. And um, I, I have full confidence that going into show two, uh, we're going to get things corrected and then exactly how I had planned it initially um, for her to be at her absolute best here in you know, five weeks from when we're when we are recording this when you guys are listening to this four weeks but um, yeah yeah um, and then I also am going to be doing my own makeup for the second show. Now, for the national show, I already have my makeup booked, and I feel very confident with the person that's doing it. But I wasn't really a huge fan of how my makeup looked um, for this past show. And so making some changes there. And then I'm also going to be wearing bearing what the background is at this next show, I'm going to be wearing my red suit to kind of take that for a spin. Um, it's something that I was leaning more towards the red, but as soon as we got there, the background at the indie show was black and red and orange. And so we didn't want me to clash within that background. So that's something to take into consideration. If you do by chance have two suits, I know it's not in everyone's budget, but if you've been competing for a while, you have a sponsorship, something like that, bringing two suits can be helpful because of the background of the show. Some shows have just god-awful backgrounds. This was not the case at this show. This was a fine background to have, but some shows it's really not great and it can really mess with the look of your tan as well as the look of your suit. And so that's something where bearing what the background is, we will be changing suits as well. Um, I think hair was in a good spot. Um, and just those, those little things that are... Um, that are seems so small, but really can make those bigger differences. Um, we're we're just doubling down on all of them. Yeah, I feel confident going into everything else. Yeah, have anything else reflection wise to say, thought wise or mindset wise you want to share? Um, 
I don't, I don't think so. I think that uh, we touched on a lot of you know good pieces as a as a whole. That I, I think it'll be nice for people to get into kind of our brain of you know what we're thinking and the thoughts that go into the show and and the things that do go into it. I obviously didn't get into immense detail. And if you guys would be interested, if you're still listening, you know this late into the podcast, <laughs> if you guys would be interested in in hearing like a, a real in-depth breakdown of, of peak weeks and kind of the details of how to go about it and what the difference maybe give you like three options because you could go about it many, many different ways, uh, but maybe like three basic options that would give you kind of an idea of, of structure. Um, we would be more than willing to kind of do that and give you guys some insight on that front. Um, but that's you know really it. Yeah. I'll just say for myself, the last thing I'll say is just how thankful I am for you. Um, I know that we've talked about it a lot, but it is a lot to expect ourselves to wear so many hats and to be doing so many things right now. And uh, it's honestly felt like just things keep beating us down. And we had both said this weekend of like, we didn't realize until it didn't happen how much we needed that win to like mentally keep going. Um, but again, like I said, the ability to reflect and have conversation allowed us to have a different type of win to keep moving forward. Uh, but it is something that like, we have a lot on our plates right now. And the dynamic of being spouses, as well as being um, client co coach, as well as owning a business together, and everything else we've decided to take on in the past year, it's a whole hell of a lot. And I know how much pressure I put on myself and how much I expect myself to show up, not only within our relationship, but within everything within our job titles. And it has been very difficult to navigate through speaking to one another, loving one another, and showing up for one another in a way that is beneficial for all of the hats. And it's something that, like I said, I, I know you beat yourself up about it, but there is 0% of anything that you did that let me down. You have been more than I could ask for in a spouse, uh, especially, but more than I could ask for within a coach. And the diligence that you take and the attention that you have to everything that's going through. The reason I keep saying that I don't have stress within the show and what I'm doing is because of you and your ability to just be so fucking good at what you do. So I know that we've both had our our times and I know you said you don't know how I have tears left to cry. And I really <laughs> tried to keep it away from the podcast. But like what you mean for me to me, what you do for me, how you love me, and how you show up for me does not go unnoticed or unappreciated. And I'm just so glad that even how hard this is that we do get to do this and experience this together because most couples only get two hours a day together That's and true. we get our whole days um, or a lot of our days. Yeah. And to go through this and battle through this and learn through this with you has been one of the greatest privileges and pleasures of my life. I feel like I've grown so much as a person, as a competitor, as a business owner, as every single hat I want to wear because of you. And I'm just so thankful that we get to do this together. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> that was, that was so sweet. Um, <laughs> I am, uh, I, I think that I just, I know that I am painfully fortunate to be able to do what I get to do every day and and love what I get to do every day um, and I've had the the good fortune and the the work ethic to be able to to match it of getting to work alongside you every day and getting to uh, build a business with, with with you every day and um, just getting to be with my best friend every day it's a it's a pretty powerful thing to be able to have uh, you right alongside my side all the time. And it's something I certainly don't take for granted. And and you know that for me, the the way that I express my love and I express my care for people is is through action. And I want people to, to know that through my actions and the things that um, I do that I, I care about them. Um, I, I am doing much better with my my words, uh, my ability to speak my love in, into the into the uh, uh, atmosphere and those different things, rather than it just being action based. But um, I'm just immensely grateful for you every day. Ditto.
love you. <laughs> yes, I love you too. <laughs> love you too. I promise no more tears. <laughs> if you guys Bruh, didn't catch it'd be my... great with no more tears. <laughs> if you didn't catch my story, I had made a story the other day. We were driving to go um we were driving somewhere together and I I'm an emotional person. I know you guys Especially don't Especially this it. late in prep, dude. It is yeah. it's some. <laughs> I know you guys don't see it a lot, but I am a crier and I'll just like we'll be sitting outside at the end of the evening just talking and I'll just be like, I just love you so much and I'll start crying or I'll get emotional about the dogs and I'll just start crying. And so Alex was like, please stop doing that in public because then it looks like we just fight all the time and I'm this awful person and people project it because one time we were at a dinner and, or a, a meal and we were having a This serious, is not one time. This is many a time. Many times. Happened, so I'm so. saying one specific time we were at a meal and we were eating and I'm crying and all of this, and I go to the bathroom to try to like clean myself up. And she's not crying for something bad that has happened. She is crying because something Emo I don't even know. Yeah. It's I, just... It wasn't anyone's fault. Like I was just crying point blank. I go to the bathroom to clean myself up and these waitresses come up to me and they are like, are you okay? Do you need us to call someone? Are you feel okay going back to the table? And I was like, oh my gosh, how can I like wear a sign on my forehead? Like I'm emotional. My husband is great. <laughs> like he didn't do anything wrong. I was so grateful that like people were looking out in the fact of like women in situations like that but i'm like i'm not a woman in that exact situation if i'm with my husband he is so caring and loving and so it's also something that alex isn't emotional and especially in public like that yeah. and so he'll just kind of go blank and he's like it's even harder because then people think i'm just not even caring about you when yeah. you know that i care and that you know like what all's going on and we're at the understanding like i don't feel hurt by him not showing emotion in that that's just how it is and then other people are like, she's crying and you're not doing anything about it. <laughs> so I uh, I cry and I try to get better so that other people don't think that Alex is this awful guy because he's definitely not. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been crying a lot the past few days, being this late in prep, all the emotions. Um, and he's just like, how do you even have tears left? And I'm like... Yeah. Hydrator's gonna hydrate. I mean, what can I say? <laughs> All right, let's sign this off. <laughs> this is getting way off topic here. All right, thank like, you guys comment, for listening. Subscribe, leave a review. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs>